Okay, so I tried to cut this down. This was like twice as long before. Um, so hopefully I was successful. Um, but this is an area of really particular passion for me. And um, Ayana, I'm not sure if you were aware, but at the very, very beginning of your presentation, like half of your cat's head came onto the screen and I just like lit up. I was so happy and I was looking at other people's reactions too. And it was literally half of a head and almost everybody was smiling. So I just, you want to take that as a, um, a real life example of how powerful animals can be on our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, even a half of a face was enough to bring a smile. Um, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to be talking about the potential of our furry friends, um, specifically the impact of pets on mental health. Um, so disclosures, I am biased. Um, these are my two cat boys, and so I am very much biased in favor of pets. Um, so I will try my best to give you a very balanced view of what the research has to say, not just the positives, but also the potential drawbacks to having pets. So just a little bit of humor. Um, my, therapist, my therapy is quite simple. I wag my tail and lick your face until you feel good about yourself again. So the dog psychologist. So my objectives here are I want to, uh, with you, explore the research regarding pets on mental health. So no working dogs here. This is not about research on service animals. There's a lot out there about service animals and could not cover it in 10 minutes. Um, I also want us to consider the impacts of pets on special populations outside of the general population of, in mental health appreciate the potential consequences of pet ownership, consider what are some possible mechanisms for these interactions that have been found, and then also how a pet relationship can be considered when we are doing an interview with our patients. I'm just gonna try to move, can you guys, I don't know if you guys can see yourselves on this, it's sort of getting in the way of my screen view. So uh, the first thing is just kind of the general mental health um, impact of having a pet in the household. Most of these studies that are out there right now are qualitative and retrospective. There really aren't randomized controlled trials of um, pet ownership on mental health in the average population. Um, but there was a systematic review back in 2018 that used thematic analysis to find some similarities in data amongst 17 studies done on the topic. Uh, in general, the overall conclusion was that pets were felt to provide a consistent um, source of support with emphasis on the constancy factor there. That pets can be particularly useful in times of crisis, perhaps in part because of their role to facilitate distraction or disruption of whatever internal dialogue is going on that's so distressful. Uh, I think one thing that a lot of us are much more appreciative of now these days is that routine and what happens when we don't have a routine, especially in the pandemic era when a lot of our routines have been so dysregulated. Um, and pets really help build some structure and routine into our day-to-day -day life. Part of that is through behavioral activation even if it's just getting outside to take your dog for a walk or playing with your kitties or, or your bird or whatever you have. Um, there tends to be a sense of positive identity for many people in being a pet parent, uh, as well as it, they can feel a decreased sense of a stigma if they do have a mental health con condition and having a pet can facilitate social interaction. For example, you're going to a dog park or even just that moment that I had with Yana here of connecting with her over her cat being on screen. So uh, this little cartoon here over on the side is one of my favorite things on the internet. Uh, just very wholesome meme about uh, how pets can help with our mental health. Um, so this is specifically looking at the impact of pets on youth. And I found a systemic review, systematic review of 22 articles. There was a fair amount of conflicting data, at least the strength of the findings was not as strong as I would have hoped. So basically the conclusions that they could come to were such that pet dogs in particular, that's where the research was, may be beneficial in preventing separation anxiety and social anxiety in youth. The evidence regarding depression, at least diagnostic depression, was sort of limited and varied. 
but overall there was a suggestion in a re reduction in depressive symptoms, especially in vulnerable populations. For example, populations that don't have um, a robust social support network, um, either from their family or their friends. Uh, youths who had even just a pet in the home tended to have higher levels of self-esteem and social competence, and this seemed to follow through into adulthood. And sort of just the practical aspects of having a dog or a cat or another animal might combat loneliness and isolation. And perhaps most importantly, though, is for me at least this idea that having a pet in your home when you're young may actually lifelong confer some increased resiliency. Um, the, now sort of the flip side of the coin. So there is a study done in California in a homeless youth population. This was at a drop-in youth center. So again, this was not controlled. Um, but they found that uh, homeless youths that had pets did have fewer symptoms of depression and loneliness. So that's a positive. Um, they didn't really see any difference in trauma-related symptoms. But concerningly, they found that these individuals were much less likely to utilize housing and job finding services and much less likely to stay in shelters. Um, there were a number of kiddos that flat out said, you know, if the shelter won't take me and my pet, like, I'm just going to stay on the streets. Um, positively, though, most of the kiddos viewed pets as social facilitators and protectors for them while they were on the street. So I talked about use. Now I'm going to talk kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. So the aging population, there's a lot of evidence out there and I won't review it all linking um, even just the, the concept of loneliness to multiple negative health outcomes, coronary artery disease, depression, suicide, and all cause mortality. So looking at potential ways to reduce loneliness could have a lot of impact across different strata. And in fact, in older populations of pet owners, they were 36% less likely to report loneliness. This was independent of their age or gender. There was this idea of a compensation hypothesis that sort of in the vacuum of less social support that one might have as one's aging, then the pet impact might be stronger. So if somebody had more high quality social connections, the impact of pet ownership not necessarily was negative but was perhaps less important however if an older adult had fewer family members or connections that having a pet in the household may really more strongly facilitate an improvement in lonely loneliness um, a kind of a an observational study done interviewing a number of adults in a adult living facility, they cited that having a pet helped provide a sense of comfort and safety, social inclusion, um, purpose in their life, routine, and a meaningful role. So this is a systematic review of older populations, specifically mental health. And um, you can kind of see from looking at the table here, I don't know if you can see me um, circling it, but there was actually a, a pretty diverse smattering of both positive impacts, but also some equivocal and even negative findings. And negative in this case, not meaning lack of positive finding, but actual evidence of harm um, from having a pet. Uh, they said, they show, showed looking at all these articles that there seemed to be some benefit for depression. And this was mediated by um, the degree of attachment to the pet, but also really importantly, the sense of capacity that the pet owner had so this means that if the older adult felt like they were still capable of caring for their pet and providing a good home for that pet, that this was more likely to improve depression symptoms. However, conversely, if the individual was worried that they weren't gonna be able to provide for their pet, take care of them, feed them, clean up after them, that this could actually worsen their mood. Um, but overall, they did find some improvements in blood pressure, heart rate variability, suggesting a reduction in um, stress levels. And so overall, the conclusion was generally a positive impact of pet ownership. I feel like it's very important just to at least touch on the idea of a mourning the death of a pet. So this was all done in otherwise healthy populations, from what I could find. A relatively small percentage of pet owners, about 4%, will experience actual complicated grief symptoms at the loss of a pet. Um, and even if not meeting criteria for complicated grief, at least 31.5% of people reported some persisting sadness or loss 
up to six months after the death of a pet. So this really, you know, sticks with a lot of people. There was some consideration of, well, why 4% are really having complicated grief? Can we understand or appreciate why this happens? Uh, so the strongest indicator that uh, one study found was that the closeness of the connection between the human and the pet was the strongest indicator. Not everybody views the pet in the same way. Some people view a pet as, well, it's just an animal living in my house. And on the other end of the spectrum, people will view pets as part of their family. And so it might be important to appreciate the relationship one has with their pet. Also, um, the attachment style that one has with their pet might become important as well. Specifically, people who had an anxious style of attachment with their pets. These are people who um, worry that something really bad is going to happen to their pet, kind of have this sense of impending doom, or really worried that they are undeserving of the love of the pet, um, are more likely to have complicated grieving. So I want to make sure that we appreciate there actually are some trade-offs to having a pet, um, that pets may actually create barriers to utilization of some resources, for example, in ho homeless youth. They can have emotional and, and financial burdens. They can actually worsen depression as well if the pet owner feels like they don't have the capacity to be providing good, good care and loving connection for the animal. Inherent in having an animal is the anticipation of a future mourning and loss, which is really hard. Um, and pet care may actually impact access to higher levels of service for, it was not something I touched on earlier, but um, if somebody's really struggling and they need to go into the hospital, like for either mental or medical health, they may be more hesitant to do so if they don't have a support network that will take care of their pets while they're hospitalized. So, these findings are all well and good, but how do we understand why these associations exist? So there's a number of different theories we don't know for sure. Um, one theory considers the attachment between um, pets when they're, between humans and pets when they're younger. Specifically, that pets may actually substitute in subway for subpar attachments to parent figures. So if you have very distant or um, poorly attuned parent figures in your life, having a meaningful connection with a pet when you're young may actually help buffer some of that poor attachment. There's pretty good, consistent and good evidence that having a pet versus individuals who don't have a pet can have some physiologic changes, such as I mentioned on heart rate variability and blood pressure. Um, and they've done some studies showing that pet, even just interactions with pets, this is not even specifically pet ownership, but interaction with pets can stimulate the oxytocin system, the bonding system that we have, and it can also mediate cortisol response. So specifically in these studies, they were looking at the speed with which our cortisol levels reduced after being exposed to a very stressful situation. And people who had the support of an animal after and during a stressful event had they were quicker to normalize their cortisol levels after the distressing situation. Some other possible considerations, the social catalyst effect. So this is just as simple as having an animal makes you more likely to, to connect with and bond with others. Uh, the development of a positive self image. Uh, just imagine if you feel like you're a really capable pet owner or pet parent that you are able to provide a great life for, for these animals that can have a really positive impact on your, your self view. Um, but there's also some interesting research out there that as of yet is still an evolving field about the connection between our gut microbiome and our mental health as well as pet ownership and our gut microbiome. So we do appreciate at this point in time that there is a connection between our immune system and our gut microbiome. They develop together as we're growing up. And there have been some studies um, showing that households that had a dog specifically in that family, the gut microbiome of the various family members were more similar to one another than a home, than the individuals in a home that did not have a pet. So the, uh, the exact mechanism of this is a little unclear, but it does seem like the, the dog being in the house somehow affects the gut microbiome. Um, and so there's this idea that gut microbiome could actually be enhanced by the presence of a dog in the family. All of these studies were done with dogs. Uh, but they did something interesting. They, they had um, several individuals who are not pet owners sort of foster a dog for a couple weeks. And then they re-looked and examined the gut microbiome and did not see any change. 
in the gut microbiome. So there's, so there perhaps is something important about the age at which one um, is exposed to animals for extended periods of time. So just some limitation of the evidence at this point to be able to draw conclusions. Almost all of the evidence is qualitative and cross-sectional. There's really very little, um, few controlled studies. The, while the systematic reviews generally show positive findings, there are a notable majority of equiv equivocal or even negative findings. Um, given the, the appreciation that um, the pet attachment is actually perhaps more important than the pet ownership itself, this is a pretty significant barrier to um, conducting more controlled studies because you can randomly assign somebody to own a pet or not, but you can't randomly assign individuals to have a specific quality of attachment to their pets. So I just want to finish off by really quickly uh, mentioning some things to consider when we're interacting with our patients. I think for myself, I realized early on that I tended to ask more patients about pets in their household than a lot of other people did. And a lot of times I would ask them, you know, how many pets do you have? And, you know, what's your relationship with the pet? You know, is this pet a member of your family? Um, and, and frequently know what to do with most of this information. So I found that myself, I evolved and grew a lot more just as I was looking at this research. I think it can be really important to assess the relationship of our patients to their pets. The meaning of the relationship to the individual, is this pet part of their family? Is it just my daughter's pet and I couldn't care less if it was in the house? or I couldn't care more? Um, do they spend a lot of time? Do they have a sense of responsibility? Do they have a sense that they have the capacity to provide for this animal? Um, also, where does this pet fall in the social network? Is this animal, as I was saying, part of the family or not? Um, do they perceive the pet as a burden? Can they financially afford having the animal? And this could lead to a sense of guilt if somebody feels like they, they can't provide. And, and then of course, there's the, the mourning and the loss and how powerful that can be for some individuals. So in conclusion, I do think there's enough evidence to support on average, pets can have a positive impact on mood and symptoms of various mental health conditions. This really does appear to be mediated by the degree of connectedness to the pet um, and, and perhaps by deficits in other social connections. But at the same time, there really are trade-offs to pet ownership. I think if you were ever to consider, as I have the idea of recommending an in, a patient get a pet, that this should be done with serious consideration first of the individual's uh, financial setup um, and their ability to see themselves as a good pet parent. Um, and so really these are unique, these are decisions that are unique to the individual. Uh, but overall, we need a lot more research to pardon the horrible pun, elucidate clause and effect here. Um, everything right now is pretty much just correlational. And these are my sources.